Hey Luke here with CatsandCarp.com and I got a chance to go out to Chincoteague Island in Virginia and do a little saltwater fishing and it was a nice little change of pace. I'm going to show you what I was doing and how I was doing it. So first off the rigs I were using were called high-low rigs. They're these uh, rigs with two wire arms and you put these two watt wire leader uh, J-hooks on each arm and a big old lead on the bottom. I was using like a 12 ounce lead. And then I would take these uh, croaker here, about a uh, half pound, one pound croaker, cut it in half, cut the tail off, and put a piece on each one of the two hooks. So each rod had two hooks and half a croaker on each hook. I was using big old 12 ounce, 16 ounce leads because there's a lot of current in this channel and so you needed a lot of weight to pin your gear down. Now of course I can't cast uh, you know, 16 ounces of lead very well. So I was kayaking my bait out into the middle of the channel. And in this area, there was a deep channel that was artificially dredged out, out in the middle. And I was throwing my bait right there in the middle, hoping for big sharks and big stingrays to come swimming right up the middle. And it did not take long. First 10 minutes in, bam, got a big old hit on my 13 foot dam rod. And it was uh, quite the quite the fight. But uh, I could tell right away it was a stingray. Um, stingrays, and, and they, ha they fight different than sharks or other game fish. They pull really hard, but they don't tend to ch change directions much. And they like to suck down onto the bottom and just stick there. And they feel like they're hung up. And then you got to pry them off the bottom and keep them, keep them going. And they're, they're, it can be quite a fight. Um, the biggest problem, though, is... I forgot to bring a landing net. I figured I'd be fishing off the sand, and uh, yeah, I didn't have a landing net. And while I was trying to figure out how to land that one fish, my second rod goes off. So I'm running over, and my dad's holding the other rod, and I'm fighting and uh, fighting another fish. And I can tell right away it's another stingray. And I'm uh, using these uh, ugly stick tiger rods, the heavy action uh, 40 pound on, uh, rods, one piece rods. And I've got uh, a Penn Pursuit number two, 8,000 class reel with the 80 pound braid on there. At any rate, I got this one uh, fish sitting there flopping around and then the second fish gets hung up in a snag. So I run back. And I've got to get it in the kayak to reach down to the water to get this fish up. Now this is a stingray. It has about a three inch poisonous barb on its tail. So you got to be really careful. Luckily they're a pretty docile creature. Um, and they normally don't sting you too much. But when they're really pissed off about being, being, you know, having a hook in their face, you know, all bets are off. But you get them on their belly and they can't get you. They can only sting you if you're uh, from the top. So, uh, you know, keep them on their backs if you're unhooking them. At any rate, I get that one stingray off and I've got to hustle back and go deal with my snagged up fish. And what I've done is, once I realized it was snagged, I flipped open the bale, gave him a lot of slack, and then just let it in the rod holder and I hoped he would swim his way out. Fortunately, it doesn't work all the time and the fish was still snagged up, so I just popped him off. And then my third rod went off, so I run over and grab my third rod and I start reeling in, and there's another stingray on there. And uh, it was just awesome. Three rods going off all within five minutes of each other. Man, these fish put up a fight. All right, uh, look at that bend in that ugly stick. I don't think that rod's ever bent that way before. But he was a little stagged up. You can see that. He was just kind of popped free. And uh, I think a lot of it was getting him over the ledge of the, the, the channel. You know, the channel's about 10 to 15 feet deep, and then I'm pulling them up into a five foot deep area, and getting them up over that lip is a real, a real drag. But once I got this third fish over the lip, I had a little surprise. I start to see my high-low rig, and what I happened is I'm not hooked onto the fish. I'm hooked onto the leftover, broken off high-low rig for my second fish. And so I had actually hooked the the rig that I'd lost that was still attached to the fish and so then I hand lined them in and sure enough there's another big old stingray on the end and uh, it was a real trick hand lining them in that braid slices into your your hands really good and that fish had plenty of fight in them. That's the same size. Yeah they're probably going into school and just came in a whole school of them and just pow pow pow. That 
it was a lot better. <laughs> I noticed that my hook got bent up pretty good in the fight, so I tried to straighten it out, and look what happened. Pink. Oh. <laughs> yeah, those stingrays really are hard on your gear. But at any rate, that was so much fun. I had to get my rods back out there, and but unfortunately, the tide was turning on me. When I put my gear out, it was just prior to high tide, and then uh, the tide started to change on me, and all the seaweed <laughs> enters the channel, and my gears would just, you know, after three, four minutes, it would just be a 20-pound ball of seaweed. And that's how it is with the tides. When you're kayak fishing like this, you have so much line in the water that the tide and the winds have a super effect on, on your gear. So you really got to watch the wind and the tide. So after picking seaweed off my gear for a couple hours, I gave it up. And the next high tide, I was out trying it again. Some of you may have noticed that I was cupping the spool when I was fighting that fish, and that's because of all the snags. I knew that thing was heading right for a bunch of snags. The fish broke off because it cut my line on a snag. Pretty sure it was something sharp on the edge of that channel. I should have had a 100 pound monofilament topper on it, and that would have prevented me from getting cut. By the way, this little kayak you see me using in this video, it's a little 10 footer from Pelican. Bought it for just 220 bucks at Dick's Sporting Goods. The backrest on that kayak is terrible, but for just kayaking out baits, it's cheap, it works, it floats, it's great for that job. Look at this. Yeah, that's a fish. Oh, is that Star Daddy? It could be. Now you'll see me just go and run back. I've got a load of line out there. I'm I probably got two to three hundred yards of line out. So trying to set the hook is a real beast. So oh, you have to kind of run back just to just to really get a good hook set but at any rate it uh same sort of problem i was having with the other testing rates it's I'm, I'm fighting it and then you get to the the edge of that channel and you can just feel it's like trying to pull a, a fish upstairs and there were so many snags in that area so once again i'm pulling i'm pulling and just bam i can just feel he's snagged in there really good so i try that trick again I go and I flip open the bale and put the rod back in the rod holder and give it a few minutes and just see if the fish won't swim out on its own. And in this situation, it actually uh, worked and I got the fish out. I just sat there and watched the line until I start, start to twitch again. And w once it starts to twitch again, that means the, the fish has started to swim out. And uh, once that happened, I just went and pulled it. And this time he slid over the lip and uh, got out of the snacks. So, a little trick there, so if you ever get a fish that's hung up, whether it's freshwater or saltwater, if he's hung up really good, just open the bale, give him some slack, let it sit for a couple minutes, and see if he doesn't swim out on his own. Whoa, look at that! Yeah, perfect. Hey guys, you like that? Yeah, he's a little spiky. How about we take ah! it at home? Whoa. How about we take it at home today? He can swim. Well, anyway, really, I hope you enjoyed this video of a day of me fishing at Chincoteague Island in Virginia. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to check out some of our other great videos, including shark fishing from the beach in Florida and how to cook, catch, and clean crabs. We put out new videos every week, so don't forget to click subscribe.